11 minutes of absolute chaos. 11 minutes of chaos is what we have just witnessed in that last period of that game. Tottenham 3, Crystal Palace 1. Like it says on the screen, go down, obliterate that like button if you are enjoying the content. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. All I want is a normal day in the Tottenham Hotspur world. It's just chaos. Every game. We're going to start with the lineup. As you can see on the screen, Vicario was in goal. Royale, Romero, Van de Ven, Udogi, Bissouma, Bentoncourt, Kulazewski, Madison, Timo Werner, and Son. Obviously, the glaring obvious point here is that Pedro Porro was not in the 11, which was the only standout thing. And obviously, Richarlison wasn't in the 11 either. That being said, when you look at the when you look at how that game went, we absolutely dominated from minute one to minute 90 the possession stats of this game. I think we had something like 80% possession. It was absolutely nuts. Like it genuinely was. So much possession. I think that's our highest amount of possession we've had of any game in the Premier League this season. But it wasn't it wasn't straightforward. Again, it was another game where Fine margins, you know. We made it. We made a couple of changes. Crystal Palace made it very tough, as you can imagine. They had a new manager, new manager bounce, and they made it one nil from a bit of absolute magic from Eze. But before that, there was one opportunity in the first half, and I just had my head in my hands. Timo Werner threw on goal. And I'll be honest, he wasn't great first half. Second half, it, it looked like two, a completely different Tottenham side. The first half, we, we, in my opinion, we lacked that killer pass. Every every final third pass was hit a bit too heavy. We took too many touches. We didn't play the right passes. Crosses were, you know, hit into the stands. We we, we were nowhere at the level where, where we should be. Um if we want to be in the Champions League, based off the performance in that first half. And Crystal Palace had a couple of chances, and obviously they went one nil up from a, from a bit of absolute brilliance from Eze in the 59th minute. You know, it's a free kick. Vicario has absolutely no chance. And when you can see the goal like that, yes, it was a poor free kick to give away. But when you can see the goal like that, you just have to hold your, hold your hands up and just say, look, that's a moment of brilliance. But the response to going one nil behind was absolutely brilliant because... We we smelled blood on, on that Crystal Palace team because they dropped back, they dropped back, they dropped back, they dropped back. Timo Werner, for me, was much, much better in the second half. He got his goal. He brought us back into the game. But then what happened between the 77th minute and the 90th minute from Tottenham's perspective was absolutely brilliant. We went for the jugular, you know. But it's just, it, it, it's, it's, it's such fine margins between the first half and the second half. You know, Son had a couple of chances in that second half. He probably could have got a hat trick. But the first half, in my opinion, we just lacked an identity. It was almost like we were trying to walk the ball into the goal. You know, Madison overhit a couple of passes. Timo Werner's crosses went into the stands. I don't understand why, when it comes down to a second half performance, we actually look like Tottenham. And when it comes down to a first half performance, we look a little bit lost. And I don't know whether that's. I guess you could say it's lack of match fitness to them because this is our first game in two weeks. Crystal Palace come off the back of a, of a, of a relatively good couple of games. I think they got a draw against Everton and they beat Burnley 3-0. So they were in a good place going into that. Of course, they played on Monday night as well and they played uh, before that. So they go in probably the fitter of the two teams under a new manager, bit of confidence. They got Eze back. But the, first, the last 13 minutes of that game, between the 77th and 90th minute, Tottenham genuinely could have scored seven goals. And that is what I want to see. But the, 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 the argument that people are throwing at me is Tottenham are far too inconsistent to be in the Champions League next season. And, we, and we're not at the level yet to win a trophy. And yes, that is true. But we have in our games moments of madness of absolute madness where Romero scores, Werner scores, Son scores. We have so many chances. And it's almost like when we're under pressure and the urgency 
you know, comes and, and we have to score because we've got a goal down. It's almost like all of a sudden there's a switch in a lot of the of the players, you know, heads and we just start playing football again. And I don't understand why we can't play like that from minute one. You know, 79% possession in any Premier League game is absolutely insane. Of course, we've got the big one next week, Aston Villa. You know, if we go there and beat Aston Villa, we will, well, if they win, we've got we've got the same amount of games played right now and we're two points behind. You know, if we go and beat Aston Villa next week, we would go above them, you know, on the same games played. Obviously, they play later on today against Luton and we play our game in hand against Chelsea. But right now, Tottenham are sitting fifth in the Premier League, you know, sc having scored another three goals today, have scored 55 in, in the league. It, unfortunately, it's another game we don't keep a clean sheet. But there was moments of brilliance and moments of absolute madness in that game. Like, it, it, it's absolutely insane. It's insane. Genuinely, it is. Like, when I, when I look at where Tottenham, like, the trajectory of this football team is so high. We've got so many talented players. But I, I don't know whether it's the, if it's the formation, but we, we, we tend to go through certain games where we just coast and we're happy to just let the game go by. And I don't really know why that is. That potentially could be, like I said, lack of match fitness, lack of ideas. I do desperately think we need another creator because as great as Madison is, he can't do it every single game. You know, he's not Kevin De Bruyne, for instance. We need someone else in that number 10 role or number eight role that can be creative. In terms of Tottenham today, there was a few, uh, a few good couple of performances. Obviously, early on, I want to talk about Van der Ven. He went down. It looked like a calf injury. You know, that was in the first half. I, I, I thought, you know, you know, hands in the ha head moment. I thought him and Romero did majority of the game really well. Ange Postacoglu made the right substitutions at the right time. You know, bringing on the likes of Brennan Johnson was probably, was, was the turning point in the game for us. You know, he comes on, gets the assist for Timo Werner, did some nice stuff down that right-hand side. And, the you know, the bench, bringing on Hoiberg when we were 2-1 up to kind of nullify the game. You know, Lacelso and Saar and Scarlett, everyone got some minutes. Radu Dragusin, for whatever reason, for hook or crook, can't get game time. And I almost feel a little bit sorry for him. But we won. Hopefully, Pedro Porro's back for that Villa game because we desperately need him. You know, Aston Villa go into uh, tonight's game on relatively good form. Plus... They've got Ajax away on Thursday. Tottenham should be going into that game and we should be winning that game. They play later than us. We've got more recovery time. Plus they play on Thursday in the Conference League against Ajax, which is not an easy not an easy game. We should be going into that game and winning. And if we win that game, I still think we're, we're, we're favourites to get top four. I genuinely do. I, I, I look at where Aston Villa are in their predicament compared to where we are. I, I think we are... Champions League favourites over them. I'm not. I mean, you look at the games we've got coming up as well. You know, after Villa, you look at, you know, the likes of Luton Town, Fulham away, West Ham away, Forest. And we've got a relatively good run of games before we get into the into the nitty gritty in April. And what I think about us right now is if we can play like that last 12 to 13 minutes against Aston Villa, we come away with three points. We come away with three points. However, if we play like we did in the first kind of 65, 70 minutes against Aston Villa and they take their chances. I don't know what I don't know what you guys think, but right now it it's eleven minutes of madness or thirteen minutes of madness, but lots of people will be coming away thinking hmm, there's a few there's a few there's a few warning signs there. You know, there there is a few warning signs. Let me know your thoughts down below if you guys haven't already. There will be a five things we learned out tomorrow um so make sure you check that out as well you know in other news chelsea just keep on messing it up and it is exactly what we want to see we are going to wrap up very very shortly one last thing i want to talk about as well is human son back with a goal you know fantastic finish fantastic finish genuinely like I, I don't know what I don't know what you guys um you guys make of it. But he I thought second lot the last 30 minutes of that game, I thought Son was very good. 
you got in the right positions. Probably should have had another goal, in my opinion. Um, I thought he was... He's finishing... It almost, like, you could blame a lot of it on Matt Sharpness, but, you know, he took his goal very well. And you know what? I actually want to give up a, a, a bit of... Um, I do want to talk about Brennan Johnson because he's now got nine goals and uh, nine GA or goals and assists in this season, and he changed the game. So I actually want to give props to him because if he doesn't come on, I don't think Tottenham win that game. He brought energy, he got the assist, and it's exactly what I've been calling out and I want to see from Brennan Johnson. If you can do that every single game, mate, you know this ability there is just. Recently, it hasn't it hasn't been. Well, it's not obviously not going to be there all season. But he comes on, he gets what two assists. Madison's ball for Romero is absolutely elite. But fair play, Brennan Johnson, because he was the difference. Two assists, and if like I said, if he doesn't come on, we don't win that game. Smash on the like on the button. Smash the like. Smash that like button, and I will see you all soon. Thank you all for watching.